Hey, trucked up guys and gals. You want to know what really softens my pasta? Battery complaining. Oh, woe oh, to the EV truck owner. When the blizzards come and the roads are closed, you shall be trapped and there is no way out. Your batteries will drain and there you will sit in the deep freeze of the night as those who were wiser than you drive free with their oil and gas and diesel beasts free, leaving you to freeze and perish with your little EV foolishness. I get it. Oh, you'll never be able to survive. It's minus 24 Celsius. So I believe that's around minus seven or eight Fahrenheit. And I'm driving right now in an electric truck. My range sucks. Oh, oh, does it? Yes, it does. I can't believe it. I just passed joggers. It's minus 24 and they're out for a jog for their health. Where was I? Where was I? What was I doing? What did I say? Oh yes, this truck gets, according to Ford, EPA 386. And I'm charged up and this morning it said 250. Did the same yesterday and I got around what it said. It's very good at calculating both the cold, your driving history, everything. it's pretty good. It sucks, I get it. And the charging infrastructure, as you've heard in my other uh, videos, plug right there, the chargers themselves aren't good. Correct, but they're everywhere. You can always get to one. In the past 48 hours, right across the United States, right across Canada, we're hearing about broken down vehicles everywhere, water lines frozen, uh, gas stations out of power, unable to get the pumps working. And then we hear about all these internal combustion vehicles stranded because their batteries, lead acid batteries, failed. Or they forgot to plug in their block heater and their oil is syrup, actually worse. It's molasses and they can't get their vehicles to turn over. People are putting candles underneath their oil pans or Bunsen burners, <laughs> that's good, to heat the oil up so they can turn them over. And here's the other thing. Most vehicles, if you buy your vehicle in an area that's typically not cold, doesn't come with a block heater. In fact, there's probably 75% of the people who are watching this right now going, a what? When it gets cold, everybody suffers. I came out, I started my truck, and off I went. I didn't have any issue turning over the motor. I didn't have any issue starting it because it just went poof. Now, do I have problems too? Oh yes, I do. And it's 100% Ford's boo-boo with management of the 12 volt system. For crying out loud, Ford, fix this one. You've had your vehicle on the market now for a couple of years, eh, time to figure it out. Oh, I think there might be a problem. It's not the 12 volt battery per se, it's the management of keeping it charged. Whatever the settings are, aren't good enough. So I keep getting a low battery warning. Whenever the vehicle is turned off, everything's running off that 12 volt. It's not running off those big, huge lithium ion batteries. It's not charging the 12 volt when the vehicle is stopped. Even if the 12 volt's low, that's stupid. But then they'll say, oh, well, it's phantom battery drain. No, it's not. It's about starting your truck. Sometimes it's worrisome because you're thinking, am I gonna get stranded in a brand new electric truck because of a 12 volt battery? Not to the same degree, as I had with my Ford Ranger. So a lot of people ask me, you went and you're in the middle of, you know, nowhere, you're driving uh, for work every day and it gets really freaking cold. So why would you buy an electric truck? Because it's actually operated better and more reliably than my internal combustion vehicle. Because I had trouble every morning, it was an older truck, but I had trouble every morning starting that thing. If you know you're gonna have less range, plan accordingly. If you have to park your truck outside, then the batteries start cold. So they have to do a whole bunch of stuff to keep those batteries warm. But here's the thing. I plugged my F-150 Lightning in last night. It dropped to minus 30 
four, I think. So I'll put the Fahrenheit down below. Now, if I hadn't plugged my truck in, that would have been a serious problem because my lithium ion batteries would have been stone cold in the morning. Massive drain on your range. All you have to do is just plug it in. You've got a gas station at your house. So I presume if you've got a truck, you're probably not in an urban condo. If you are, you need to reevaluate your priorities. If you have the ability to have a charger, that's part of owning an electric truck, is you wanna be able to plug it in at night. Whether it gets too hot outside or too cold outside, it's gonna trickle charge and keep those batteries managed and not drain your battery the following morning. And everyone's gonna say the same thing at this point. I can hear them now. Well, look at all the lost electricity you're just throwing away at a fraction of the cost of gas no matter how you slice it it's cheaper and i'm not wasting anything away because my electrical bills have gone up about 30 percent you say wow that's pretty crazy 30 percent and then i take a look and say okay well how much is that every month to pay for charging my truck at home so uh, i'm gonna say 75 to 100 dollars a month when i had my ford ranger and i use it every day for work six seven days a week that thing worked I was using up about $800 to $1,000 a month on gas. There's myth and there's truth. There's facts and there's FUD, okay? I'm not telling you to go out and buy an electric truck. In fact, there's a lot of reasons not to buy an electric truck, but a lot of the, the fear surrounding the batteries just isn't founded okay you're going to have just as many problems when it's minus 40 outside with a diesel or gas truck as you are with an electric one if you're able to keep your electric vehicle plugged in overnight or you're able to store your vehicle in a relatively warmer environment than it is outside you're going to do better than you will in a gas or diesel truck so here it is this is about a third to about a quarter of what I've done today. Every time, of course, I pull over uh, and turn off the truck, it resets this trip setting. So this isn't trip one, trip two, this is just this trip. So this trip, I did just under 38 kilometers, uh, and I stopped and go a lot, as you can see. It's showing 56 minutes on the clock because I stopped a lot. I went and got coffee, I went and did some ablutions, I met with a client. And all of that time, the vehicle was running, was never turned off. 16% outside of the actual route itself, actually driving the vehicle, was climate use. My controls of seat heaters and steering wheel heaters and rear defrost and blowing the heck out of the fan and having my settings basically through the roof because I want it to be toasty today. And exterior temperature, that horrible, horrible cold is going to eat half of your battery life. And... Eh. Not correct, 14%. That's it, that's all. That's my rant. Thank you so much for listening in. And you know what? I really wanna hear from you. I really wanna know what you think. If you had this truck in your driveway, what would you wanna know about it? Let me know in the comments. If you say, I, I do this for a living, I wanna see your truck do that, I'll do it. Let me know in the comments and let's go out with this truck as if it were your own and see what it can do or what it can't. Thank you again for joining me. We'll see you next time.